Well, here we are. Friday again. Friday again. Friday again. Frankenstein tea. Frankenstein tea. Friday. <laughs> I'm delighted. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a really busy uh, week. You February have had break. a lot going on. <laughs> yes, indeed. But yes. we've had a lot of kids in the children's room. And, uh, oh, we've seen them. Oh, yes. And we've and, and heard them. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're so happy. It's uh, great. We we had a Did lot you have of a good week? Disney uh, singing, uh, Disney musicals uh, downstairs yes. in the children's room today. Yes. We had Disney musical bingo. We had um, we had a lot of kids turn out for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yes, you did. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's been a great week. It's yeah. been a great week. There's been a lot of sugar, a lot of candy. A lot of sugar. You know, Willy yeah. Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You kind of have to. Te- it lends itself to that. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it's a requirement. <laughs> yeah. I came looking for sugar, and I told you, and I got like a popcorn flavored jelly bean. It was not what I was looking for. It was not what I was looking for. No, I was like, all right, where's the chocolate? Enough the, with, the, with the popcorn did, flavored jelly bean. Did you get your chocolate? Yes, I okay, did. Good, good. Okay, good, good. All right. You're welcome. Yes, I did. Yes. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you have to have chocolate. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. And there it was, popcorn flavored jelly bean, which was not my favorite. But it was fun with the uh, the jelly beans. The kids could kind of combine different flavors yeah. to kind of create their own. Yeah, flavor. yeah, it's like yeah. a whole chart down. Oh there. yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it, was, it was science, you know. Yes. <laughs> well, and that was another great program. The stop um, animation. Full yes, the stop motion animation. Stop motion yeah. animation. Yes. That was another great one you did. Full steam ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had a decent number of kids, uh, 11 or 12 kids turn out for that. That was yeah. great. And, and they were working in teams. That was the part I liked. They were working in teams. Yeah. And we've got those videos now, and we're going to put them all together. And then, you know, at the end, at the culmination, they're going to be watching that video. Oh, that's so, great. With a little popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> or popcorn-flavored <laughs> yeah, jelly beans. because no one else. They're going to pick those out. I yeah. was the dummy that ate it. <laughs> <laughs> did, yeah. it did a kid pick it out for you? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I picked it um i did a good program last night too you did yes i did i had book club Mm -hmm. and that Mm -hmm. book club is building a little and we've been having great discussions and we have another book club coming up we do should i do that now sure yeah why not talk about that now so um the vermont reads it's the vermont humanities council yes Council of the Humanities? Humanities. Vermont Humanities Council. Vermont Humanities Council picks a book for all of Vermont to read uh, yearly. This year, it is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Yep. Here, I'm going to show that to everyone here. So we have copies that we are giving away, and they are at the front desk, and we've given away a lot of copies. Completely free. Completely free. I uh, gave away the copies that were in the office here, so I had to get ours from the display. But you can come check this one out. Um, And then we're going to do some programming around this. There's a writing contest. Yes, indeed. And I can talk a little bit about that. But do you want to continue? So, yeah. So there's a writing contest. Uh, We're going to do this at the book club, uh, which is Thursday, March 21st at 5.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome. And this is a YA book. So, you know, get somebody in your household or maybe a grandkid to read this with you and bring them. That would be great. We could do that. And then on April 4th, so the Thursday, the 21st of March at 5.30 is book group. And then Thursday, April 4th, which is 4-4. I'm like reading these numbers as if like they don't make sense. <laughs> um, I wrote that right. It is Thursday, April 4th at 5.30. Rick Winston is going to do a program um, that relates to the topics of this book. And that program is called Red Scare in the Green Mountains. That'll be very interesting. That'll be very interesting. So that's a book he wrote. And he's going to do a slide presentation on that book. Fantastic. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so, yeah. so we're building some momentum around this book, which is exciting. I like to participate at that level. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think that's all we can say about the book so far because I haven't read it. Have you read it yet? I haven't had a chance no, to read it. No, we haven't yet. read it yeah, yet. Yeah. So we'll, we'll 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 remind you of this, but those dates are going to come up quick. Yeah. Um. So so keep your eyes peeled for uh, information about this. And just so you know, we are working on putting together some read likes, some books. Um, for middle school readers who that the, the books touch on similar themes so uh, the plan is maybe in April to have another book club for middle schoolers that will discuss some of the same themes but in a uh, in a appropriate manner for middle schoolers yeah, right. <laughs> yeah so yeah yes yeah, so it'll be really good 
And yeah. um, just so you guys know, um, so the copies of that book are at the main desk, and the idea is for you to take it home and read it, and then you don't have to return it to us. You can pass it on to another friend. The idea is that these books should just be a catalyst for discussion and uh, for... Change. Change. Yeah, go there you it. go. For change. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So we're doing Vermont Reads. So... Um, and, and so here's another program we're running with it. So... Traditionally, what we've done along with um, Vermont Reads, uh, Barry Reads, um, is offer a Barry community writing and art contest um, based on the themes that are in that book. So this year's Vermont Reads book, um, we're going to be uh, challenging um, children, teens, and adults to write a story, poem, essay, comic, or letter about something you value or appreciate, appreciate about yourself or your family, or a character, because it could be a fictional uh, story as well, or something that makes you or a fictional character unique or special, or create a piece of art that celebrates something about who you are or what you value. Write a short artist statement about your piece, because we always want to have a little bit of writing in it, even if mm -hmm. it's a worse mm -hmm. work of art. Right. So, that is um, going on right now, and we have the, um, the sheets for you to pick up um, here at the library. You can pick them up at the main adult circulation desk, or at the children's desk, or at the teen desk. And the submission deadline is Friday, March 15th. So this is open to grades 1 through 12, and there are adult categories. So um, if you're a student, you can turn these into Karen Heath at Berry City or Berrytown Schools. Or if you're at Spalding High School, Christine Smith, who's uh, in the library, the librarian at the uh, Spalding High School. Or to me, here at the Aldridge Public Library in Gothier, Children's Librarian. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, our awards and celebration ceremony will be on Thursday, March 28th, 6 o'clock p.m. And we will have a virtual format as well. Um, it'll be um, hybrid, so nice. in-person and virtual. So, uh, yeah, if you have any grandparents who are away, um, they'll be able to watch it as well. Is it always those categories? No. Or does that change every year? Um, it's almost always those categories. It's usually, um, sometimes we have a kindergarten category. Oh, yeah, so cute. we have um, grades 1 through 12 this time. Yep. Yeah, and plus adult. But I mean, is it art or writing or comic, comic, oh. that, those kind of, you know, what are the, the submissions? Are oh, they... gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the art thing is something that we actually added in starting with the pandemic because, uh, let's see, I mean, uh, I'm trying to remember the first graphic novel. It might have been March. Oh. And I think that when we had March, we decided, oh, well, people we should be able to draw. People should be able to draw and make yeah. a graphic novel. Yeah. So, you, you know, it was such a popular, um, such a popular submission uh, format yeah. that we decided yeah. that yeah. we would continue to offer yeah. it every year. And not just, you know, graphic novel or comic format, but also just regular piece of art. Uh, any piece of art, yeah. yeah. So we've got like 3D art and we've had paintings and it's it's just been really wonderful. So That's yeah, great. so yeah, I hope that you will uh, you'll consider joining, uh, considering writing or uh, creating a piece of art for that contest. And uh, definitely come down and check out our art show that's still going yeah, on as well. Yeah, right. So the art show is up on the wall. You have time to get this book yep. um, and participate in the contest. Yep. Uh, and then it was hard for me to get a book club date because we're busy with this program. Yeah. Um, but so then you can do the book club and then the award ceremony and then Rick Winston. Rick, Rick Winston, yeah. yeah. So, so we'll, we'll keep it going for the next two months. Yeah, really. we got yeah. a really good lineup. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see. Um, we 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 didn't start with hi, who are we? But you just said who you are. I'm Kristen. I'm the director of the Aldrich Public Library. This is Frankenstein T. I, you know, this is a program that started during the pandemic in, um, in, a, in a, the library I worked at previously. And I started it by, uh, I did it every day at three o'clock. I encouraged people to have a cup of tea with me and to take a time out and just to sit back and listen. Um, it was such a horrific uh, monster of a time is where Frankenstein came from. Tea is, you know, let's take a time out and have some tea together. 
Uh, Frankenstein is also a permissible read in the public domain, so that was important to me as I was, you know, broadcasting to all the millions of people watching me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> all the millions. Um, and and it was a short story. I read a short story uh, for every day for over a year. I think if you if you if you want and if you're into short stories, you could go listen to some. They're at Island Free Library YouTube channel. Um, I think there's like 372 short stories. Wow, yeah. over a year's worth. Over a year's worth. Yep. Yeah. I would bring home my iPad and do it from my house on days off. I was going to work during the pandemic. I was the only one in the building. Um, so I was talking to a screen a lot by myself in a building. Me too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Virtual story time. Yeah. And so this is a carryover yeah. from that. Um, but lately, I've been thinking of it more as a library podcast. Yeah. And, and I like this evolution. I do too. Yes. So, yeah. So I hope you hang in there with us. You know, we want to give you news and updates. We want to. The, the premise of Frankenstein Tea originally was to, uh, you know, do some outreach and stay connected when we were all um, isolating and um, not allowed to go out. So that was like one of those really underlining premises for me when I started this program. And that still is the same, right? Like it's this is outreach, and you're connected to us. You're hearing our updates. Hopefully, you're able to get into the building and visit us. But maybe some days you don't, and 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 maybe the evolution into a podcast is is less of that, less yeah. of this idea of not being able to come in, but um, but still us letting you know what's going on here. Or maybe you're on the other side of the country, but you still want to connect with yeah, your you, Yeah, you still want to know <laughs> yeah. what your grandkid is doing. Exactly. You want to say, hey, did you see that they're reading this book? Yeah. Or, um, mm -hmm. I'm stuck on the grandkids today. I'm not sure why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because there's been a lot in here. There I, have been I a lot have in, seen yeah. that this week. And a lot of grandparents. Yes. Grandparents, yep. yeah. Yep. They have to take care of the kids the, during break because yeah. mom and dad work, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm stuck on that today. So it's it's a it's a it's Frankenstein tea. It's it, we're gonna do a little tag line there. Ian and I will work on that. Uh, you know, a library podcast or something. We'll we'll tag line that in. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's what we're doing here today, and we've been celebrating Black History Month. Um, and there are some great episodes uh, that we've done, and we had all the staff tell us one of their one of their favorite um, Black author uh, books. Uh, most were novels. We had some nonfiction in there. Um, most people did one, <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> but we green lighted it if you didn't want to do one. But I, I want to say, if I may, uh, you know, last week we had a great episode uh, with uh, with Lee, who's the longest term employee, yes. longest term employee here, and she said some really valuable things, and she read a very uh, interesting book. Um, very thought provoking. Very thought provoking book. Um, and I just, I just want to backtrack to it because I, I think when you talk about race, it can be, um, well, it's, it's sensitive. Uh, uh, and I know uh, that we should only talk about race with people from that race in the room, right? That, that's problematic when, when white people sit around and talk about black people. That, that, right. that's, so, you know, we did that. And so I, I, wanna, I don't want to feel bad about that. I want us to recognize that it's always a learning process that we that we have only good intentions that we try to get better at our work all the time um, and so I want to just say that that we did a whole month of that uh, with the resources that we had and the staff that we had but we do know a healthier dialogue for everyone would be more inclusive and and so we'll work on that um, and then you know maybe we use language that wasn't great last week that's mm -hmm. still bugging me yes you know this the uh indians right uh we, we don't say indians about people anymore anymore yeah. no and and so when we work with lee um who we adore and i know everybody else does too uh this is not a criticism this is about a generation this yeah. is about generation and so we know um and we should have made a correction online so we're going to make it today that that better language and i think we should ask next week at Avenue story time yes what what is current yes uh, because I, I I'd like to get clear on that but um, indigenous people is is correct language and first peoples mm. um, and I think that is preferred at this time yes um, I don't even think Native American is, is preferred preferred yeah. yeah because it uses American mm. right because right it's not it's not clear enough it's not distinct enough it's mm. not enough of a claim mm. so um, I just wanted to backtrack and put that out there that it's a learning process and I hope you appreciate that and um, 
you know, let us know any other missteps that you may see uh, or hear us do here on the program. Um, Maybe we can get Melanie on to uh, Frankenstein Tea in the yeah. future as well. Yeah. yeah, that would be really great. Yeah, that would be really great. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's last week. Um, uh, we uh, let's see what else. Um, I, it, it's worth mentioning though that this what this is also one of the reasons why it's so important to read diverse books, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, you don't want to just be reading about people like yourself. Yeah. Especially in especially in a state like Vermont, you know where. We are not a very diverse state, really, right. you know? Right. And so it's so, that's why it's so, so important to read diverse books in Vermont. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you, you have, we have to have a, a better shared experience of yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we, and we uh, work hard on that with the collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and that's, that's, a, that's part of the work that libraries can and do do uh, for equity, inclusion, and diversity is, yeah. is the collection work. Um, and the programming, which is yeah. what you're, what we've been working on, and what this program was was doing, and I think we did a great job of it. Yes. I'm, I'm not discrediting it, and there are some really great episodes and some really good book recommendations. Um, but just to backtrack to like, it's always a learning process. Yeah, it's it's generational. We hear, I'm sure you hear it in your households, in your homes, and it's not a time for us to be frustrated or mad, but just to keep educating each other. Yeah. And acknowledge that, yeah. Yeah, and acknowledge that, yeah. Mm. Um, and now I can sleep. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, Ian knows I was upset last week, and he he was too. We were both like, mm, we you know we should have said well, something, yeah. said something, done something in the moment. Um, but we've done it now, yeah. so we can move forward. Um, the other thing we do at Frankenstein Tea is a little mental health check in, and. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna run through that today, and I'm gonna share with you that. Um, you know, when we do this check-in, it, it can feel perhaps overwhelming or like, oh my goodness, I didn't do any of those things. Am I having a breakdown? Um, you know, I don't know what it's going to trigger for you. Um, but just to just to know that there are resources available throughout the library, throughout the state of Vermont, throughout Barry City, uh, Barry Town. You know, there are resources here for help. Um, I am not trying to trigger something in you, and so today I'd like. For you to think of it as um, like a goal like not oh my gosh I didn't do this but maybe there's something on your this list that'll be like oh I should do that yeah and I can tell you one quick story about that I had a girlfriend who had a nervous breakdown um, while she was visiting me um, and she was married and she came out to see me because she was having a nervous breakdown but I hadn't realized how bad it was and uh, she really fell apart uh, on a visit and I called her husband and I said, hey, this is a bad scene here. She's having a, you know, what's going on? I'm, I'm sending her back to you, you know, but you, you, we got to get her help, you know. And he said to me, oh, she needs a nap and a hamburger. And I was pissed. I was so pissed. A nap and a hamburger and my girlfriend is having a breakdown. I'm not sending her home to you, buddy, right? I was really upset. Um, and I have since learned that although a nap and a hamburger was not going to cure her, it's really important. Sure. Sleeping and eating right is really important. So what he was saying to me, and it took me years to understand what he was saying, was, yes, she needs help. But right now, Kristen, in your moment with her, make sure she's sleeping enough and getting protein. Well, that's, that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, isn't it? Yeah, you have to have your basic needs yeah. covered first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I got to tell you, I was mad at him. For years, <laughs> years, I, we, and, and my other girlfriends and I were like, "Yeah, the nap and the cheeseburger right. moment, you know, like that was going to fix it." But, right. but that's on this list here. Yeah. And so, if that's what you need right now, is a nap and a cheeseburger, get yourself a nap and a cheeseburger. There are some times when I need a nap and a cheeseburger. Yeah, I, had, I, I, I made it to the cornerstone today because I wanted a cheeseburger. There you go. <laughs> I've never been in. It's lovely in there. Did I had a great time. Yeah, I went. Oh, a brilliant! Yeah, a smash burger and a diet coke. Yeah. Ooh, um, that sounds good. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, so 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 that's my antidote. Uh, a anecdote? Anecdote. Anecdote. Anecdote, anecdote an is an like an if I took well, poison. Well, it could be an anecdote could be and an <laughs> antidote. It's an anecdotal <laughs> maybe, maybe anecdote. The, the cheeseburger and the nap are <laughs> the antidote. Antidote. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's, not, it's not the end all be all. It's not the. It's not seeing your therapist. It's not calling for help. Yep. It's not taking your meds. It's not. Um, you know whatever that step may be, but it is what you might need most immediately, mm. um, so that you can take those next steps. Right. So um, I challenge you today to uh, the following: um, Have you showered? Have you eaten a meal and drank enough water? Are you thinking kind thoughts about yourself and others? Have you moved your body and exercised? Have you gotten fresh air and sunshine? Have you spoken to a friend or family member? And have you gotten enough sleep? So um, th this comes from a place of no stigma, no shame. This is very foundational mental health work here. Um, we share it with you. And again, today we share it with you um, that maybe you're not doing so good. And maybe those are your sim one of those is your simple goal for the day. Maybe you just need to get yourself in your shower and brush your teeth, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I need to write that on my list, showered or brushed your teeth. Um, or? Or, or and. <laughs> yeah, or had a cheeseburger. Or had a cheeseburger, yes. Yeah, or sat in the sun, or, mm -hmm. or just stood outside. Maybe you just need to stand outside. Maybe things are going so poorly for you that you can't get out, but... Especially this time of year, right? Yeah. Because the tail end of winter is almost, it, it's almost the hardest time, right? Yeah. Because it, we, we've been through all of winter and it just seems to go on and It's on. just going on yeah. a little bit. <laughs> I can, the weather is actually changing like overnight, right? It is. Like actually, it was supposed to be 50 and it's really only 20. <laughs> Still cold. But today. the sun is shining. But the so, sun is shining, yeah. yeah. And if you can't get outside, sit in a window that's sunny. There right? you go. Like, yeah. you know, take your baby steps, whatever those baby steps are. Um, and of course, they're just goals to get you to help if you need more help. Get that vitamin D. Yeah, get the vitamin D. That that might get you further along um, in your week. And a cheeseburger and a nap. The <laughs> yeah, you may you may now remember that story. That may be something that sticks with you. Um, but but don't let it don't let it don't let it piss you off like it did me four years. Um, it's the truth. Sometimes you need a cheeseburger. You know, that's the only way you can get through that moment. Is, yeah. Um, definitely with mental health, you need enough sleep. You need to have your, your brain is yes. when, when you're in a, a, a uh, an episode. Uh, you definitely need some sleep. Yeah, it's, it's it's extraordinary how much sleep affects like everything in your body. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Not just your brain. So. Not just your brain. No, it all works together. It's a holistic approach there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Shall we transition to some literature? Certainly. What do you think? Some books? Certainly. All right. Because this is also one of the needs, right? On Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we need to feed the soul as well. <laughs> and in the mind. Is, so, that, is that? I think it is. Like, I think that's one of the top needs, you know, at the top yeah. of the, the pyramid. Yeah. 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 Because you have your basic needs as well. Yeah. Interesting. So, but then, you know, there's also safety is there as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of your basic needs, safety and shelter. But then you, you you need something to inspire you as well. So this is this is one of I our like, basic needs like as well. I like this. We might have to talk more about this on our little podcast here. This idea of how libraries really can fill all, a lot of those roles. Oh yeah, all of them. We're, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're we're safe. Yeah. Yeah. We you provide rest. safety. You we provide warm. shelter. You can buy she We provide shelter. Warmth. Yeah. Literature. Yeah. Food. Food. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna work on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. We'll, we'll have to talk about that in the future. Yeah. Yeah. On our library podcast. Yes. Well, so transitioning to the literature, um, we're going to read a little Langston Hughes today. So it is March 1st, so it's the first day of Women's History Month, and we're going to be reading some um, and Maya Angelou next week. Yes. But we figured we would close out Black History Month um, with a little Langston Hughes. Go back to the 1920s. And it's kind of fun because, you know, the library was fairly new at that time. So 1908, yeah. right? Yeah, so this is like right around that time period. Yeah. So it gives you a kind of a opportunity to kind of place this in history and in Vermont history as well. Yes. So, so this book that I found, um, Langston's Train Ride by Robert Burley, illustrated by Leonard Jenkins. Um, this talks about... Langston Hughes, one of his most famous poems. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that, but I wanted to uh, read the author's note first. I love the poetry of Langston Hughes. In Langston's train ride, I wanted to capture just one thing, 
the moment when Langston Hughes came to believe in himself as a writer. The details of this moment and the wonderful poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, that he wrote that late afternoon are unique to the life of Langston Hughes. But many people have experienced something similar, the realization that they can achieve their dreams. My hope is that Langston Hughes' train ride is not only a historic retelling, but also a beacon for other young people with a dream. Robert Burley. So I'm not going to read the entire picture book for you due to copyright reasons, but I'm going to read um, about half of it for you. So um, in the very beginning of the book, Langston is in New York City, and um, he has just published his first uh, volume, his first book of poetry. So this would be, um, I believe, 1926, and his first book was The Weary Blues. So he's off to a party to share some of these poems and to do a book signing and um, the clacking of his feet, of his shoes on the cobbles of New York City. They remind him of the clacking of a train. Mm. And this takes him back to the train ride when he wrote his first poem. So I'm gonna move on to that train ride. Clackety clack clack clack. Yes, I'm riding the rails. With my head tilted against the seat, I listen to the sleepy click of the train wheels, resting my feet on the steel bar in front. Happily, I gaze out at the soft blur of trees through the dust-flecked window. It's 1920, and here I am, all of 18 years old. High school is behind me, and I'm traveling to Mexico to visit my father, who lives there. My father, who left us to fend for ourselves when I was just a little boy. The train rolls on as the sun starts setting over endless rows of Illinois cornfields. And then, very slowly, we're crossing a long bridge. It's the Mississippi River, far below, with a beautiful golden light shimmering on it. The trees on the farthest shore seem ablaze. Something deep inside me stirs. I feel more awake than I've ever been before. Looking down on its wide, dark flow, I think of what this river means to my people. Slaves worked here, on boats, in nearby fields, and alongside the banks, stacking sandbags to hold back floods. Some slaves were sent down the river, too, to be worked to death on the meanest plantations. I even remember that Abe Lincoln once traveled this river on a raft, all the way to New Orleans, where he saw a slave auction and learn to hate slavery. Whoosh! Words and phrases come rushing into my head. The names of other ancient rivers bubble up. African rivers. The Congo. The Nile. The Euphrates. Suddenly, three words, just three, but I know I have to write them down. How? Where? I snatch the envelope with my father's letter in it and I turn it over. Who cares where? Just write. On the back side, with a little stubby pencil I always carry, I write the words. I've known rivers. My thoughts roam. Suddenly I feel the history of my people flowing right up to this moment. To me. Yes. I feel I've lived other lives on those muddy river banks. Somehow, somewhere, I've heard the dusky waters of all those rivers lapping and singing. It's true. It's true. I've known rivers. I keep the envelope flat on my lap. I'm madly scribbling words down now, rapidly, one after another. Poems are like rainbows, don't you think? They escape if you're not quick. I turn my head to get one last look at the sun-tinged Mississippi. Going, going, gone. I scroll the last line. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. And the poem is done.
Carefully, I placed the envelope inside my coat pocket. Mustn't lose this. No way. I sit there, gazing at the reflection of my face in the glass, reciting the poem to myself over and over and over. I lean forward and press my nose against the window. Everything is gathered up in one huge darkness, but as I stare out, I see a few tiny dots of light balanced on the edge of the horizon. Questions keep coming into my head. Am I really a poet? Is it possible? Can I sing my America too, as other great poets have sung theirs? Can I? Then, as I watch the far-off flickering lights, a very tiny voice inside me answers softly, but firmly. Yes, it says. Yes. Yes. I settle back in my street. In my seat. The wheels hum. The car sways gently, on and on. Suddenly I hear the staccato street sounds again. A large crowd of people is waving at me. We're back in New York City, in the present. I arrive in front of the shipwreck inn. Langston, someone shouts, sit down and sign some books. So I do, still feeling the rhythm of that long ago train ride under my feet. A friend calls out, Langston, read some poems, read some poems. I turn to my river poem. Everyone is still as I read. I remember the glinting sun on the Mississippi and the train wheels turning and how that poem flowed into my soul like an ancient river of love for my people. Rivers, I think. Maybe we're all part of a big river that flows from way back to here, and from here to who knows where. Here's Langston's poem. The Negro Speaks of Rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawn was, dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Langston Hughes. So a little bit of information about uh, Langston Hughes as well. Um, Langston Hughes is one of America's greatest poets. He was born in Joplin, Missouri on February 1st, 1902, but grew up in several places in the Midwest, including, including Kansas, Illinois, and Cleveland, Ohio, where he graduated from high school in 1920. While in high school, Hughes was both class poet and a star performer in track. Although Langston's father, who lived in Mexico, tried to discourage Langston from becoming a writer, the young man began writing and publishing poetry at an early age. One of his first and most well-known poems, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, which we've just heard, appeared in 1921 in the magazine Crisis, edited by the African-American leader, W.E.B. Du Bois. During the 1920s, Hughes spent time in New York City where he was part of the Black American literary movement known as the Harlem Renaissance. He published his first volume of poetry, The Weary Blues, in 1926. Many poems in this book are written in a blues, jazz, or slang style that was always one feature of his work. As a newspaper columnist, Hughes created a very popular character named Simple, whose witty and wise pronouncements on American and especially African American life appeared in newspapers for 25 years. During his lifetime, Hughes received many fellowships, awards, and honorary degrees. When he died in, on May 22, 1967, 
Langston Hughes was recognized as a fighter for justice and a poet whose work would stand the test of time. And I, I think you, you and I kind of reflected that 1967. Yeah. Um, what a time, you know, that was just on the cusp of the uh, civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. What an interesting time, yeah. you know. Yeah. So hopefully you all wow. enjoyed that that book. Enjoyed the beautiful artwork. So, what is the artwork? Is it, do you, does, it, does it say? Is it like pastel or? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, uh, because it's beautiful. It really is. I just kept seeing the covers, you know, when you would walk. Oh, they're just beautiful. I, that is a very good question. It looks like it's paint, but it looks. Yeah, it looks. It looks like maybe that, it's yeah. paint. Maybe it's paint on. Maybe like it's paint on wood. Does it say at the? Is there? Is there? Let me a, see. So what? Leonard Jenkins. Um, let's see. Illustrator of several books for children. Malcolm X. Say fire burning brightly. Motorcycle song. Um, it does not say actually. Mm, yeah, yeah. They're beautiful. But it really is beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. So this is over at our Eastbury branch. Um, our York branch. So uh, hopefully you'll come and check that out. Langston's Train Ride by Robert Burley. Yeah, really beautiful artwork. There's been episodes where when we finish, Ian and I say, ooh, barely made it through that one without crying. That that one was close for me. That is a beautiful, beautiful reading you just did. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, no, that was beautiful. That, that was close for me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tough. Okay, so let's do a little bit more Langston Hughes. These are from the Weary Blues. Um, and uh, From his first book, 1926. The, there you go. Uh, let's see, so that's not quite 20 years after the library is built. Yeah. Right, for some... Eight, about 18 years About or so, 18 yeah. years after. Um, he's young, 1926, if he's born 1907. 1907, yeah. Yeah, he's a young boy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's a young man. Yeah, he is. Um, younger than us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and is this what he's reading at the store? I mean, it, I know. We, the, I know. This could be, these could be some the of the poems. Signing. Yes. Yeah, the book signing. Yes. The book signing. The book signing. These yeah. are the poems that he's reading if this is from the Weary Blues. Yes. Yeah, this is from the Weary Blues. Yeah. Um, and I took, I picked two. I had a third one, um, but it was a little darker, and I thought on this sunny Friday I would, uh, and I also think that's a movement, right, this, this idea of black joy. Yeah. So this uh, poem by Langston Hughes from the Weary Blues is called Joy. I went to look for joy, slim, dancing joy, gay, laughing joy, bright-eyed joy. And I found her driving the butcher's cart in the arms of the butcher boy. Such company, such company, as keeps this young nymph joy. Very nice. This one from Weary Blues by, Yang by Langston Hughes is called Dream Variation. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently dark like me. That is my dream. To fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest at pale evening, a tall slim tree, night coming tenderly, black like me. That's really nice. Yeah, and it has a real music to it. And you know, when you started reading it, I suddenly remembered, oh yeah, you know what? There's the picture book version of that one too. Oh, well, <laughs> it is really fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Dream variation. Dream variation. That that they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So you, we, you can really I think you can really see what they were saying too, like how it it is almost like music. It's, mm. it's very influenced by, you know, kind of, it's very musical poetry. Well, and, and, and poems can be hard, right? Yeah. I mean, they can be hard to understand and yeah. hard to um, read and hard to get through. Um, but these two are lovely. And, oh, yeah. And, and they're not, uh, you know, you, you still have to know how to read poetry, right? You still have yeah. to know how to do it. Um, and that's not being boastful. But, um, 
but but they're lovely. These are these are very accessible. I yes. think is what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. So so definitely worth taking a deeper dive into Langston Hughes there. And that book, the uh, the Weary Blues. That's yeah. That's the title of one of his also his other famous poems, the Weary Blues. Yeah. So well. so those I just printed right off the internet. They yep. are in the public domain. Yes. Um, because it's past 100 years and uh, yeah. yeah. So you could go and read from the Weary Blues right now. Of, of course it is. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. Because you, yeah, it's 1920 or 20, 2024. It's 2024. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. you can get the Weary Blues right online um yeah and continue to read read some more Langston Hughes go for it yeah yeah it's a great Mm -hmm. thing to do this weekend yeah absolutely fantastic yeah what else we got anything else we're done I I I think that that's it we've actually talked about what's happening going to be happening in March we did. Did you do Abenaki story time? Oh, I did not. No, so I we so. we did kind of mention that. We did. So we I, we have a story time coming up this this coming Monday. So I guess that would be let's say today is the first. It would be the fourth. Is I think that it's correct? The fourth. I think yes. that's right. Yes. So um, March fourth, Monday, ten thirty a.m. Um, we have um, Melanie uh, Mackin coming. And she's going to be bringing some drums, and she's going to be bringing some books, and uh, we also have a bead craft as well for kids afterwards. So it's going to be a really wonderful uh, time. She came last year as well, and uh, people just really loved it. And um, she's a wonderful storyteller and a wonderful reader, so I think you're all going to have a really wonderful time. And uh, come back to the back door at 1030 because the rest of the library is actually closed. It's just open for children and parents and caregivers. So ring the doorbell and we will let you in. And We'll, uh, we'll run right down. Run down. <laughs> that's run right. down all the stairs. Make our way and say good morning. Yes. You're welcome to come in. And welcome you down to the, uh, the Milne Community Room, which is where we do story time on Mondays. And that's where the artwork is also oh, yeah. displayed, the that's art gonna show. Be a, that's so. going to be a really good time in yes. there. The so. artwork and the the drums and the story and the craft. That's a really well done. It, don't thank well you, done. Don't thank you so much. That'll be so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. so it should be a really fun time. So hopefully you guys will come and um, you will you'll see um, the uh, the Abenaki story time and then the following Tuesday or the following day Tuesday we're having a Dr. Seuss story time because this weekend is also Dr. Seuss's the anniversary of Dr. Seuss's birthday. Got so yeah. yeah. So that and. The, I, I have older kids who are planning to come to that because they, they just love Dr. Seuss, you know? <laughs> so we're going to be reading some really great Dr. Seuss. And uh, we might even, who knows, we might even have some green eggs and ham. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, that sounds like, <laughs> you, like your mother has something up her sleeve. <laughs> well, don't worry. This is, uh, um, I think it's vanilla pudding with a little bit of green green oh, food coloring all right no and more then, no more don't be the spoiler and that's true yes don't be the spoiler. <laughs> that's enough of it <laughs> but it's very good it's delicious so yes it'll Excellent. be a really good time a good Excellent. way to close out the end of february break so oh they're still on break they they are until uh, oh, so tuesday you, oh right and tuesday is also instantly um town meeting day so Parents, remember to go out and vote. Go out and vote. Your vote is your voice. Your vote your, your vote is your voice. Exercise uh, your democratic right. Excellent. Thanks so much for coming. We'll see you next week, if not before, on Frankenstein Tea. And, and until then... Until then, yes. Stay, stay safe well. and keep, keep reading. reading. <laughs>